Hello and welcome to Ember's Reading Room. Today we have a book that would be wrong 11 months out of the year. So instead of waiting for that one right month out of 12, I thought, why not? Because it's the next in order of this series based on the books that I have and the copyright dates. So today we are looking at Christmas in Rainbow Forest starring Whisper the Winged Unicorn. At least we're not like stores and completely plastering this everywhere you can. Also feel free to just skip this one and wait till December. I would be okay with that. It, just trying to fit it in the one month and maybe by December I'll come across another Christmas book. But for now, let's uh, visit the winged unicorn who looks like somebody else. Celestia! In Christmas in Rainbow Forest, starring Whisper the Winged Unicorn, written by Jill Wolf, illustrated by Tom Kinari. Is that the guy from the last book? Yes. Okay. Different illustrator? Yes. Okay. Also, that's the bunny from the last book. The last two books. Okay. There's some color variations here, folks, and some overall design variations. But Whisper still has a rainbow mane and tail, golden horn, golden hooves, white body, white wings, and she's the star, so. Oh, that's very nice. It was Christmas Eve and Rainbow Forest rang with the sound of laughter. Whisper the winged unicorn and a merry group of friends pulled a long sled through the snow. On the sled was their Christmas tree. You guys live in a forest. That seems a little awkward. Whoa, Whisper! called Phineas when they reached the entrance to his cave. So apparently Dark Hollow was no longer scary. Apparently. He unfastened Whisper's harness and Grandmother Bear helped Phineas carry the tree inside. Also, nobody's scared of Phineas anymore. Whisper, Jonathan, and Bixby followed. They couldn't wait to start decorating the tree. Also, who knew he celebrated Christmas? Because mm. I, I hate to break it to you, not everyone does. Yeah, and we don't know much about the Nodkins. Except that, you know, Phineas is the only one still around, studying the history of his people, the Nodkins. Phineas set up the tree, then Bixby and Jonathan put a string of cranberries on it. You're putting them on crooked, said Grandmother Bear. Bring them over this way more. The two rabbits took the string of berries and began to wrap it around Grandmother Bear. Not very nice. Not around me, around the tree, she cried. Good gooseberries, what's next? Gooseberries? Phineas and Whisper laughed until their sides ached at the sight of Grandmother Bear and the two bunnies trying to untangle themselves. Kitty's joined us once again. <laughs> Welcome, kitten. She's not really a kitten. When she was finally free, Grandmother Bear sat down with a sigh. Let me rest, you young rascals, she said. So Jonathan and Bixby finished hanging the ornaments Phineas had made, while Phineas hung several of his old stockings over the fireplace. I can't wait until tomorrow, Whisper told Phineas as they said goodbye on the doorstep. It's going to be a wonderful Christmas. Phineas smiled. Yes, it is. Now remember, everyone's invited here tomorrow for the best Christmas party ever, he called after her. I wonder if he's also still known as the morgue. Possibly. Also interesting that it can snow, considering the fog is actually steam from hot springs. That's a good point. Whisper flew home through the fading light, feeling very tired, but she didn't sleep soundly that night for thinking about the next day. You and every pony else on Christmas Eve. Mm -hmm. She was up early on Christmas morning, and so were most of Phineas's friends. They arrived before noon, laughing and carrying strange little bundles. Merry Christmas, Phineas greeted them. Come in, come in, welcome all. He had lighted the tiny candles on his tree and built a big fire in the fireplace. Very traditional. Very. Also, I would think that would hurt. Mm. Those prickly holly leaves about one's neck. Everyone crowded into Phineas's home. Whisper, Grandmother Bear, Bixby, Jonathan, and many other forest animals. They gathered close to the cozy fire. Let's open our presents first, shouted Bixby, and all the rabbits cheered. Squeaking and squealing, they unwrapped their gifts. Thanks for the skates, Phineas, yelled Jonathan. Phineas, you knew I wanted a sled, cried Bixby. 
They held up the toys Phineas had made for them. Those are a bit big. Well, specifically the skates are a bit big for the rabbit. The, the sled actually kind of fits. Also, I don't think that's quite how a rabbit's foot is shaped. Yeah. Whisper was very pleased with the pink seashell necklace and the beautiful storybook Phineas had given her. Hmm. Bit better there. Being a storybook in a storybook. Mm hmm. Well, when we met Phineas in Whisper, the Winged Unicorn, starring in the Dark Hollow, mm -hmm. Phineas was going to teach her to read. For you, Phineas, from all of us, said Sarah and Sammy Squirrel, dragging a big bundle over to him. But the bag was too heavy and they fell. Hundreds of walnuts, chestnuts, and acorns rolled out on the floor at Phineas's feet. What a splendid gift, cried Phineas, smiling. We took turns gathering all of them, Whisper told him proudly. It was my idea. Well, thank you all. These are a real treat. We'll roast them later over the fire, said Phineas, who gets a present from everyone that apparently he has to share. Well, he chooses to share it. He does. And there's Whisper's necklace. Oh, how nice. Also, she looks a lot like Celestia in this book. Different illustrator. Mm -hmm. Jonathan and Bixby grabbed their skates and sled, then ran outside in the snow. Come on, Whisper, they shouted, and she followed as fast as she could. At the top of Spruce Tree Hill, Bixby flopped onto his sled and slid down, yelling all the way. At the bottom of the hill, Jonathan skated in circles on Goose Egg Pond. I guess they shrank? I guess. Whisper tried to skate behind him on her small hooves, but she fell flat on her face. I think flying is safer, she told Bixby with a laugh as he helped her up. I realize rabbits were that strong. Apparently. Flux is new word, everyone, in case you haven't noticed. Or as my catchphrase. When they returned to the cave, Grandmother Bear and Phineas served the Christmas punch and roasted some chestnuts. Phineas passed around plates full of sweet, gooey fruitcake that he had baked himself. Remember all these forest creatures, we can't exactly have roast beast. Yeah. Though, I don't mind a good fruitcake, but it's so hard to find. No kidding. I, I believe there's a certain sect of monks in Europe that you need to order it from. Yeah, yeah. And for radio listeners, I was nodding off to the side. And no, there's no video watchers, by the way, except for... The pretty picture you see on YouTube, which is usually the cover. <laughs> Here's to all of us. Merry Christmas, said Phineas, raising his mug and clinking it against Grandmother Bear's. Jonathan and Bixby clinked their mugs together, while Whisper drank carefully from a huge bowl. Her legs were still shaky from her fall while trying to skate on the pond. Apparently, it specifically has a Christmas bowl, because that is very Christmassy. Mm-hmm. And you can see the tree in the background, a nice circle, some silhouettes. Mm-hmm. Oh, we're missing one resident of Rainbow Forest, though I don't believe he would fit in the cave. Oh, the dragon. Yes, Dorian does not seem to be present. And now for some Christmas carols, Phineas said when everyone had finished eating. He pulled out a funny-looking music pipe and had to blow on it several times before he found the right note, which made Jonathan and Bixby cross their eyes and giggle. Phineas led the group in song, his pleasant voice mixing with Grandmother Bear's growls, Bixby's squeaking, and Whisper's soft hum. The sound of their own singing made the guests sleepy as they sat by the fire. You can't really play a flute and sing at the same time. Okay, music pipe, but still, you can't really play a wind instrument and sing at the same time. Mm, you have to stop, sing a little bit, then go back to playing the flute. Yes. Pipe, horn, whatever. It's not really doable with a wind instrument. Strings, yes. Percussion, yes. Wind, not so much. Tell us a story, Phineas, Bixby begged him. Tell us one of the tales of your people, the Nodkins. I see, reindeer. Of course. This is a children's book about Christmas. Of course. It just so happens that the Nodkins have an old Christmas tale about reindeer that fly, said Phineas. Would you like to hear that one? A story within a story. Meta. You mean reindeer can fly? Like Whisper does? Bixby asked him. Whisper turned red as Bixby stared at her. Yes, like Whisper, replied Phineas. Once in a land a long time ago near the great northern forest, he began the story, but Bixby was already nodding and blinking his sleepy eyes. 
Oh, how cute. Even Whisper had trouble keeping her eyes open as she lay on a bed of straw by the fire. Isn't this a wonderful Christmas? Bixby asked Whisper as he snuggled down beside her. We got lots of nice presents. Yes, said Whisper. She looked around the room at Phineas, Grandmother Bear, and all the other creatures of Rainbow Forest. But I think the best gift, Bixby, is the love and friendship in a home like our Rainbow Forest. And with that happy thought, Whisper and Bixby fell sound asleep. A very cute image. Also has some standard Christmas imagery in there. Like the, what was it, the Northern Star? Or the... Yeah, the... Guiding Star, the Christmas Tree, Christmas Wreath, the Detrius of Unwrapping, so there's an open box and including some wrapping the, paper. Yeah, including the hay, you know, mm -hmm. manger. Yeah, and uh, the design of Phineas's costume this time compared to his robes in Dark Hollow. Mm -hmm. Also his crook, more like a shepherd. Mm -hmm. Also a morgue is a keeper of knowledge, so that would technically also make him a wise man. Hmm, very nice. Yes. This cave doesn't look anything like the cave in Dark Hollow. Different illustrator. Yes. Well, everybody looks different. And the end. Yes. The closing image is a black and white sketch of Whisper framed by a Christmas wreath. So, what do you think? <laughs> uh, there have been better children's books and there have been worse. The thing that always bugged me as a kid was the color shift and the design shift for Bixby, Jonathan, and Phineas. Because even with the change in illustrators, Bixby was still a brown bunny. Hmm. But now he and Jonathan are both black and white here. Hmm. And Phineas looks very different from when he's introduced in Dark Hollow. He's much broader, more beard, actually very much more old style Santa-like. You know, not the more modern, but a much more Victorian Santa style. Mm -hmm. And the exclusion of Dorian always bothered me. Dorian has been in, like, every other book in the Whisper series that I own. And I know he wouldn't fit in the cave, but it seems kind of rude to exclude him. Mm -hmm. And this has been Christmas in Rainbow Forest, starring Whisper the Winged Unicorn, written by Jill Wolfe. Illustrated by Tom Canary. Side note, yes, I know I'm probably butchering most of the authors and illustrators' names. Thank you for listening. Please like, share, comment, subscribe. The usual requests of a YouTuber. There are many other videos in the Ember's Reading Room series, and several of those are dedicated to Whisper the Winged Unicorn, if you want to follow more of the series. If you're interested in finding the book, check below for an Amazon link. We'll provide one if it's available. Also see below for a shopping rebate link to the site Ebates. Use of these links provides this channel with a kickback, does not share any of your personal information, and Ebates and Amazon are in no way sponsors of or in any way actually affiliated with Ember's Reading Room or any content of the Lux Analysis channel.